Hey guys, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In this video, we will be talking about inheritance in C++. Well, inheritance in C++ or any programming language, it is no different from what we know about inheritance, right? So what do we know about inheritance? A predecessor shares some of his properties with the successor. So say a father has a green eye and maybe the son will also have a green eye because of inheritance of genes, right? So that is what we know about inheritance. Well, in programming 2, there is no difference in the concept. If there is a parent class and there are child classes which inherit some properties from the parent class. That, that is what inheritance means in programming. And we will see how to do that in C++. Now, why do we need inheritance? Well, say I have a class. So here I have an animal class. So I have some properties in the private section and I have some properties in the public section. And now I want to create 10 animals. Well, it's pretty easy, right? So since we know about arrays, what we can do is we'll just say animals or animal A10. We have created 10 animals. Now let's say I want to create 10 tigers and 10 dogs also. And uh, all, they all have these similar properties. But the only difference is that a tiger will also have another method called roar. So something like this, void roar, which will print roaring on the console. And uh, similarly, a dog will have bark, right? So how do we do that? Well, if, if you think you're copying the classes and then uh, creating two different classes for tiger and dog and then creating two different arrays in a similar way, you're not wrong. It will work. But an efficient way would be to inherit the properties from this animal class. Well, if we see tiger and dog, both are animals, right? So both have a species name, both have an age, both eat, both sleep. But the only difference is that a tiger roars and the dog barks. So if you can take advantage of all these properties from one class and add whatever extra features you want to add, then that solves the problem of creating a separate new class, right? So what I mean is, say I have a class tiger and then I have some method like public void roar and then this is just going to print out roaring on the console. Now say I want this tiger to have all the properties of an animal. It should have a species name, it should have some age, and then it should eat, it should sleep, and all those things. So you can just copy it down, but an efficient way would be to inherit them. And how do we inherit something? Well, we'll just put a colon over here, and then put public animal. And we'll talk about what this means, right? So for now, this is how we can inherit the properties of an animal. And now if you create a tiger, you will have the properties of the animal as well as the tiger. So I can do t.e, which is basically defined in this animal class. It is not defined in this tiger class. And I can also do t.roar. That is also valid. And now if I run that, well, string does not name a type. Yeah, that's because I did not use using names with std above. Close that. And now here you can see eating and roaring. So eating is from this thing, from the animal class, and roaring is from the tiger class. Well, if you want to create a dog, it is very similar. You can just do class dog and then public animal. And here you can just say public void park. which says barking on the console. Then, right? So now if you run this, well, I did not create a dog object, so you can do that from here. So dog uh, d and d dot eat, d dot bark, because roar is for the tiger, right? So you can say d dot bark. And if you run this, you will get similar results. You will say eating and then barking. So, that is the advantage of inheritance. You can take advantage of all the features which are defined in the parent class or you have something called a base class. There are di different names for this. So in some languages, it's called super class. And then it's also called as a base class. It's called a parent class. And there are many names. And then this one also has similar names. So this is called a child class. And then 
this is called uh, an inherited class or something like that right so basically we'll just stick with parent child because that fits the analogy and um, that's how inheritance works in c++ it's that simple and now we'll just talk about these things and uh, we'll also see how to take full advantage of inheritance in later videos because it's not a one video topic inheritance is very vast and then there are many advantages of inheritance so we'll see what these things are in this video we'll see how to do basic inheritance in this video and then we'll see how to do multiple inheritance and all those kinds of complex stuff in later videos right so first of all talking about this this will specify where to inherit and this class will specify from from where to inherit so this is to where and this is from where so let me just write it down this will specify where in tiger do i have to inherit and the other one will say from where do i have to inherit so these are the things we are specifying what we are saying is you create a class tiger which will inherit all the properties which it can inherit well there are some restrictions we'll talk about that but this statement this particular line means that create a class tiger which will inherit whatever it can inherit from this class which is animal and put everything in the public section so that is what it means so public means it doesn't mean that everything it is going to inherit is going to go into the public it means that whatever it inherits just inherit as a structure so if you see here you have private and public right so when you're inheriting it as a public inheritance what you're doing is you are just maintaining the structure so a private anyway doesn't get inherited so if you have anything else that is going to go into that section and public things will go into the public section well you can do private here too so you can do something like private what this will mean is it doesn't maintain the structure it will just put everything inside the private section so all everything it inherits go to the private section and uh, these methods are now not accessible from here so now if i run this okay i inherited in the tiger class so let's just make dog as private and now if i try to run this i'll be getting an error why because i have made it private inheritance that means whatever I can inherit, I will put everything in the private section. So something like this will be created inside the memory and uh, these two things will go inside here. So private doesn't get inherited. So it doesn't get inherited. So private members don't get inherited. They are private to that particular class. What gets inherited is public and protected. So remember protected from our video on classes. Well, we talked about protected very briefly over there because we told that protected is better understood in inheritance. So we'll talk about that now. Well, protected is basically when you have something which you don't want to share with the objects, but you want them to be inherited. So something like this. I, I don't want species and age to be accessed from objects of this class. If I create an animal object, I don't want the species and age to be access from that object but i want those things to be inherited so at that point of time i will make these two things as protected members so protected means i cannot access with an object but i can inherit them so what i can do here is instead of private so let me just remove this i can just protect it here so protect it and now actually these two things go inside tiger and dog so if i do something like public here well i as i told you it maintains the structure right so if i do public here and then i'll just create another method right so void set uh, age which will basically set the age so int age and then this age you can see here age is actually coming here which is basically not defined in this tiger class but it got inherited from this protected class sorry this animal class so if i do this age equal to age it is going to work and uh, what we can do here is i'll just say tiger t and if i do t dot uh, sorry t dot set age to something like 10 and then we can also retrieve the age so let's say int get age 
split the age. And if we try to print that age, so if I do C out T dot age, sorry, T dot get age. And if I look in the console, you will be seeing 10, which we have set here. And that age is actually de derived from this animal class, right? And now if I try to create something like animal or even tiger, if I do tiger dot age, I won't be able to access it. So if I do T dot age equal to 10, I'll be getting an error. So it says, uh, if you look in the debug console, it says that int animal age is protected. So that means that I cannot change that. It is like a private member to the objects, but it's like a public member for the inheritance. So that that's what protected means. So this is for the private. So this, I did not change this method. This is for the private thing. For protected, it means that it can be inherited, but cannot be accessed by objects. Public means that it can be accessed by the objects as well as it can be inherited into other classes. So that's all about basic inheritance in C++. So again, as a recap, this will specify where to inherit. So if I do protected here, what is going to happen? If I do protected here, everything is going to go inside the protected function. So why do we want to do that? So let's say I want to create another thing. Like uh, uh, for now, let's say tiger baby. It's the baby of this tiger. So if I want to inherit something from this, I can do something like this, public tiger, which is completely allowed. Now what is happening? Something from here is going to get inherited inside the tiger and something from tiger is going to get inherited inside this class, which is called tiger baby. And that is how inheritance works and that's how it boosts your programming, right? So the next video, we will talk about other types of inheritance and how to effectively inherit something and we'll talk more about how constructors and destructors work in inheritance. So till then, happy coding.